Hey y'all. Hey. So <laughs> let me go and close this off. Um, just some things I need to just clarify and get some things out of the way. Uh, listen, uh, it's a lot going on. It's a lot going on. Hey, good evening, everybody. Listen, it's a lot going on as it relates to the church world right now. Uh, everybody's up in arms. People are upset. And uh, people are calling themselves getting upset with me because I'm just here to report what was reported to me. All right. So, hey, what's up, y'all? Hey, what's going on? Hey, listen, at the end, <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> um, it's a lot of stuff going on. I just got a whole email, but I told y'all this was going to happen. Um, a lot of confusion is going on as it relates to the election and stuff like that. What's going on, everybody? A lot of things is going on as it relates to the elections. People are upset. People are in their feelings and stuff like that. It's absolutely crazy. But at the end of the day, y'all, listen, I told you all last week that this was going to happen. No lie. I did. Hey, what's going on? I told y'all, hey, Gail, what's going on, Samantha, Felicia, Monica, hey, everybody? Hey, what's up? I told y'all this was going to happen. Um, I just got a long, I mean, long email. Baby, you got the foreign bishops are upset because they can't run for presiding bishop. You got the pastors over here in America that are upset because they ain't get no support and all this other stuff like that. You, it just, it's a lot of stuff. And I keep saying, I keep saying, y'all, y'all, we got to figure out something, right? We got to figure out something. And we got to make this, let me send this. We got to figure out something to do because this is getting absolutely out of hand. Uh, who is that? Hey, what's up? Hey, hey. Um, yeah, Samantha, wow, was correct. Uh, let me go and send this to this client real quick. Hold on, y'all. I'm trying to do, uh, one thing at a time. All oh, these lights are so bright. Good Lord. Uh, so yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Absolutely a lot of stuff. Um, what I need y'all to understand is... While some of y'all church folks are like, Mario, just pray. Y'all, like, we're going to do more than just pray. Thank you, Deontay. <laughs> y'all going to do more than just pray. Like, it, I need y'all to not be stupid. Okay? That, that's, that's just as nice as I can put it. Not to be stupid. Okay? I need y'all to understand that the Bible says you, know, you need not to be so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Okay? That's, that's what I'm going to need y'all to understand. That, hey, what's going on? I'm going to need y'all to understand that now is the time for us to be diplomatic and we need to get some things. Miss Pamela said we got to have faith. Oh, Lord Jesus, Father God, Father. Miss Pamela, baby, as much faith as we can have, that is fine. But we need some folks who are going to be, who are going to do things right the Bible says in business be men. You got to do things right. You have to do things with integrity. We have to stop. We we can't, y'all, we can't do, we can't do the church like this. <laughs> we can't do the church like this. I'm just being honest, y'all. Hey, what's going on? We can't do this. Like, y'all, this is, this is really sad. But every time, every time, what's going on? Every time they do the election, my thing is this, where is the godliness in dealing with the church officials being put in place? Girl, seriously. Um, oh, let me hit sin. Every time they get ready to do the elections. I already told y'all what I thought about Drew Shit. I told y'all the last time. Every time they get ready to do the elections, this is exactly what happens. Hey, what's going on? Every time. Every time they do the elections, this is exactly what happens. Do y'all remember the last time they did the elections? Do y'all remember the last time they did the elections? I'm, I'm Church of God in Christ, I D-I-E, okay? I am. Uh, last time they did the elections, there was a whole smear campaign when it came down to Bishop Daryl Hines. A whole smear campaign. Baby, they were sending me emails. They were sending William McCray emails. Everybody emails and it was tawdry. 
It was tawdry. You hear me? It was a whole hot mess. And I'm just like, and it, then it came out to be a lie, right? It was a whole lie. Nobody even got up to, to apologize to Bishop Dare Hines. Not at all. Not at all. Oh, you welcome, Miss Pam. Oh, it's all good. It's all love. No, no hard feelings. Um. Okay. Okay, Shante. I remember, I mean, it was this whole big thing about Bishop Daryl Hines having twins and babies all on his wife, and that was far from the truth. And so when I found out the truth, I came back and corrected that and, and made a public apology because I was like, but what got me was that this information came right from bishops, right? This information came right from bishops. This came right from the 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 um general assembly and stuff like y'all it's y'all I'm telling you, I'm telling y'all. When I tell y'all it it goes down like everybody out here talking about Mario, I'm I don't like you cussing. Go to a general assembly meeting. Hello, go to a general assembly meeting. Huh? Who who called you? Who's called you? Hello, who called you got here? Come on, talk back to me, thanks. Talk back to me, thanks. Who is who is C O G I C? Are you C O G I C or are you Church of God in Christ? There's a difference. Who is coaching? Y'all already know. When y'all go to the meetings, what's up, Miles? When y'all go to the meetings, baby, I'm talking about the meetings, meetings. Baby, you gonna get cussed out and you gonna get threatened and they gonna be what ready to fight in a heartbeat. Let me tell y'all something. I went to a um, I went to an April call meeting. I went to an April call meeting. This was when it was in Memphis. I went to an April call meeting when I was living in Memphis and didn't know no different. I got there late. Auntie Pat, glory rest her soul. She was uh, she was there and um, supervisor um, Hamilton was up talking. Galen, period. So she was up talking about you know, uh, how the women's meeting, how they get more things in the women's meeting that they do for convocation. So I was sitting there with my phone just recording because I was like, you know, the saints need to know what's going on. So I posted it and I woke up, my phone was, I didn't even know what was going on. Uh, oh, Elder Carpenter, you are sure right? Them backroom meetings are epic. Um, and I woke up and Auntie Pat had called me. She was like, nephew. Actually, a friend of mine from Minnesota, she had called me. She was like, Mario, what is going on? What? So I didn't know. So then Auntie Pat called me and told me that Bishop Hunt was looking for me. This is Bishop Hunt, the one who died. Lord rest his soul. Uh, Bishop Hunt was looking for me because they was trying to, you know, they thought I was spying. I'm like, I'm coaching. What the heck y'all talking about? Right? So, you know, they, everybody was upset, and, you know, talking about some, you is the you is of the devil. We rebuke this, right? I was like, what is we rebuke? Y'all see what I'm saying? What is we rebuking? What is we rebuking? Y'all didn't eat, y'all, oh, y'all ain't even at the meeting, okay? And you rebuking me. You didn't even know this was going on. Period. So I went ahead and took the video down, right? And uh I go back to the meeting the next day because I'm just, you know, I was, you know, this is one of the meetings I go to. I went to the meeting and uh, hold on. I went to the holy meeting, April call, and um, they had four big niggas sitting around me. <laughs> I'm serious. They had four big niggas, like two big niggas over here, two big niggas over there. I said... Now, what I'm not going to do is feel like y'all got a whole problem and ain't no problem. You said don't record. Okay, I'm not going to record. Please don't put these big... I want to say something else. Put these big gorillas around me. Like I'm finna come up here and put a bomb up in the church. What? Are you serious? Y'all, this y'all that that's always been me. I'm I'm Super Mario Brothers. That's period. That's I like the game anyways. I love Mario Brothers. Anyways, so
So that that's what went on. So I have this email. I think I'm gonna go through this uh, probably in depth at another time. But it's too much, y'all. Seriously, it's too much, right? It's too much. What's the problem right now, Gail? And we have a show. Gail, when is the show? It's tomorrow, right? The show is tomorrow, right? Thursday at 8, I think. Um, show us tomorrow at 8. Josh, I'm paying you no attention. Um, what she said? Um... So what's the, what's happening right now? The reason why there is so much there, the, everybody's emotions are in the air, is because the foreign bishops are upset that they're not able to vote, right? The foreign bishops are upset because they're not able to vote, um, and some of the regular people are very upset because you know they've had to pay. What I heard, what I heard that the application fee to apply to be on the general board, not to be on the general board, but the application fee to apply to be on the general board is $500, okay? The application fee to be on the general board is $500. Now, why are we paying $500 for application fee is beyond me, but okay, it's another form of making money, whatever. Does it come with a ring? Does it come with 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 automatic seat? Does it automatically come with I get to sit on the general board or sit up there on the platform? I don't know. Five hundred dollars? Are you serious? Are you kidding me? Okay, hey, whatever. But these men, these men have paid five hundred dollars for the application fee, but they cannot. Vote to be on the general or it, it, it's they can't they can't vote to be on the general board or they can't they're not going to be able to be put in to be on the general board if, if that makes sense okay um so it's a lot of people it's a lot of people that's upset right now okay it's a lot of people that's really upset right now and again um, I had this conversation, uh, William and I had this conversation and honestly, the thing is this right here, what, what, what they're, what they're doing is this, everybody is, everybody is trying to go around talking to us. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody's trying to go around talking to us. Hey, Orion, every, I'm going to say it one more time for y'all back there in the back. Three seats from the exit door. Y'all trying to go around from talking to us. Mind you, our platforms, our voices reach further than yours. What was funny to me was that all of these bishops and things are on their services and stuff. And y'all got three people on your lives. Uh, now, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but y'all got three folks on your live. Okay? You got three people. Now, mind you, normally... I have between 100, 200 people, 300 people on my live. Depends on what I'm talking about. But if I, if it's, you know, if I'm on YouTube, I got about 900 people on at one time. But y'all got 30, 40 people on your live. Are you serious right now? Serious? If if people that have the platform, hear me. If people that have the platform give them the information that is credible, so that they can talk about it. So that the people that watch them, especially the Kojic people, they can have a better understanding of what exactly is going on. But y'all don't want to do that. Y'all keep trying to get these no names some little time. That's okay. That's okay. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you like this. Hear me, Saints. Hear me, Saints, Anks, and Friends. Hear me, Church of God in Christ. Hear me. Listen to Elder Giles when I tell you this. I am going to continue doing what I'm doing. As far as the well-being and the withstanding of this church, if it go down, hell and flames, hell in the handbasket, it is going to be what it's going to be. Because what we're seeing is what I've already told y'all. These people, period. And I had some little, 
Well, what they told me, Talmas, uh, they told me it was some queen was on my page want to sit out here and tell me I'm not concerned about no souls. Are you serious? Everything I've been talking about is uh, I'm concerned about the people, not just the folks in position, but I'm concerned about the people. And then here this thing is, you know, he a whole Trump supporter and you want to tell me that I'm, I'm out here deceiving the people. Are you serious right now? Are you freaking kidding me? I'm deceiving the people. What? Okay. So, like I said, like I said, like I said, at the end of the day, it, this is this is absolutely foolishness. Um, so this this thing. So so what was funny to me was, I, and and I had a conversation, and I, I really want to do, I really want to have a conversation with Bishop Wooten, and I and with reason. I want to have a conversation with Bishop Wooten because come to find out, I want to know what Bishop Wooten thinks about this as a, as a bishop in the church, as a bishop in the church and someone who's been very vocal about certain things, right? I want to have a conversation with Bishop Wooten, Bishop Patrick Wooten. Not only do I want to have a conversation with Bishop Patrick Wooten, but come to find out, Bishop Patrick Wooten is a Republican. I didn't know that. Bishop Wooten is a Republican and a Trump supporter. I just think that is so, that is interesting to me. That is so, that is so interesting to me that you are a Republican. No problem. No problem. You are a Republican. You can support whatever party, all this other stuff. I'm not a liberal. You know what I'm saying? I, uh, I don't, ooh, Lord. Um, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Republican at all. Uh, Bishop Wooten is a Republican and he's also a Trump supporter. And, you know, for real, for real, he's a Trump supporter. And I just, I think that's interesting. I would love to, I would love to see that. I would love to have a conversation with him about that because I feel like, um, like, how does that work? Charity said, yes, he is. I attend his church sometimes. Uh, I just want to know how that works. I want to know how that works. Okay. I want to know how that works. How does that, how are you a Republican, which is fine, but how are you a Trump supporter? And with everything that is going on and everything that Trump has allowed, um, I just want to know how does that work? How does that work? He did. He did. He talked about Kamala like a dog. He did. I, I, and and, and that, that's, that, that's the other thing. I, how do you talk about Kamala like a dog, but then Trump is, y'all, it, it's it's real, like, uh, you know, uh, it's just, it's a lot. Anyways, so, um, uh, 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 so yeah, so with everything, I just, I, I would love, I really wanted to have, at this point, I don't even think it really matters anymore. At this point, I don't even think it even matters anymore. I actually want to have, yeah, Martin Luther King was a Republican too. The Republican Party was very different back then. I actually want to have a conversation with, um, a lot of the, 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 the bishops, I want to have a conversation with Bishop, um, with Bishop, um, uh, Shear. I want to have a conversation with him. I would love to have a, a whole panel meeting with the bishops to just talk, you know, about where, where do they see the church going right now? Evangelist, I really do. I, I you know what? I talked to his son and so I'm, I'm trying to set that up. Um, I want to have a conversation with the bishops because at this point with the way things are right now, I really want to know what is the direction? What is the direction that they really see the church going? 
Baby, I'm I'm fourth generation Church of God in Christ. So, you know, y'all can y'all can miss me with saying you ain't hey, miss me with that. Okay? Miss me with that. Period. Um, I I really want to know as as a as a member of this grand old church, where do you see the church going? And how are you going to take this church to a better place? Y'all, you, am I making sense? Am I making sense, y'all? Y'all, am I making sense? Where do you see the church going? Gordon Brown said, what direction do you think the church is going? Uh, to hell if they don't get right <laughs> Oh, you welcome, Damien. Uh, Gordon, to hell if they don't get right. Period. <laughs> y'all, I'm, I'm, y'all, y'all, I'm telling you, like, if y'all like me, you see this stuff and you just be like, what? Baby, it's too much. It's, it's really too much. It's really too much. And honestly, it's taking COVID for the people to see what's going on. But you know what's funny, Evangelist Christine? Evangelist Christian? And that's this. And that is, this mess has been going on for so long. It's been going on for so long. And the people have set back like dumb fools. The people have set back. Y'all make sure y'all share the live, okay? Make sure y'all share the live and tag 10 people to it and tell them, come on over here. The King Jai, the King is Ella. King Ella is, is talking to, today, this evening, okay? Um, it's amazing to me, y'all. It's amazing to me that we have so many questions as it relates to to what the president of the United States is doing. But we do not ask questions as it relates to what our pastor or our bishop is doing and the well-being of our spirituality and the well-being of the church. Now I know I know that just made some sense. I know that just made some sense. We act we are so concerned with what is going on with our politicians. And we're so concerned with what the what the what the white supremacy is doing, what the alt-right is doing, and what the Democrats is doing, and what the what the what the what the um BLM is doing and, and how they're involved in the politics and things of that. But we do not, we are not concerned with what our our leadership is doing. Okay? You feel what I'm saying? We are never concerned with what our pastors are doing. But Samantha, last year, it was so many preachers that was getting bust out, was in all type of sex rings and sex capades and all of this stuff like that. And yet and still, people still went to these folks' churches. John Gray lied over and over. He ain't Kojic, but he lied over and over and over again about cheating on his wife. And he still was found to be a liar. And they still went, oh, we love you, Pastor. What you love? What you love? Is he helping your, is he? Oh, everybody's sin. Everybody falls short. Is it? Are you that simple-minded? Are you that simple-minded? I don't want you over me and you can't admit one to your wrong. I don't want you over me and you are still doing the same thing over and over again. Period. Hey, Debbie, period. I don't want you over me and you and you make your wife look a whole fool. I don't want you over me and you sit up and sleep with your... I don't want you over me and you having babies all out of wedlock all throughout the church. I'm good. I, matter of fact, I don't want you laying hands on me 
and transferring what you got. I got enough I got to deal with. Hello, somebody. Come on, somebody talk back to me. Hello. I don't need your problems. I got my own problems, period. Um. So, and there, you know, the situation with Jamal Bryant. The situation like Jamal Bryant, like Jamal Bryant think is, is, is a cool dude, but sir, how you going to be a pastor dicking every woman that like, come on. Hey, LeBrett, what's going on, brother? How? Is there no integrity in the church anymore? Or was there ever any integrity in the church? David, you are crazy. I agree though. Is it was there what is there any integrity in the church? Was there any was there ever any integrity in the church? Hey Gerald, was there ever any integrity in the church? We just continue to do the same thing over and get again, over and over and over again. Thank you, David. Do we continue? Do we continue doing this stuff over and over again? Okay, Donald said, see, I like these type of things. Donald said, we should focus on the word of God. Okay, you know what? Donald, I love people like you. Donald said, we should focus on the word of God and not be moved by man. Hallelujah. Donald, that's not how this works. No, 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 no. Because how long? How long? Y'all, listen. <laughs> listen. I think Donald came for service today. <laughs> I think Donald came for certain. Oh, I can't put this on right now. Wait a minute. I really don't like you, Josh. I don't like you, Josh. No, I don't like you at all. You playing way too much. You playing way too much, Josh. On my cell phone. I don't like you right now. <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think he came for service. Okay. What was that? Uh. I think Donald came for service today. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Hold on. Donald! Donald, I got a good question. I got a good question, Donald. How long do we sit back and we don't say nothing? How long do we sit back and we're quiet about the foolishness that goes on in the church? How long, oh Lord, do we sit back and we see the mess and we sit back with our mouths closed? How long and, and, how, how, I mean, I like being for real. Who is that? Hey, Mama Dolores. That's my GCT family right there. How, how long, y'all? Tweet, how long? Now, Tweet, now, now let me tell y'all something. That's my cousin, y'all. Tweet is a Porter fan. Do you hear me? Tweet is a Porter fan. Tweet wants Bishop Porter in office. <laughs> she do. Listen, but I just feel like some of these people, when they get, I feel like I'm about to preach. I, I felt it in my throat right there. I felt it in my throat. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor. <laughs> How long, how long are we going to sit back and be quiet and we know the mess? So I, I just feel like, I just feel like, I just, <laughs> I just feel like Tweet at this point, you know, with, with the sanctity Right? Can, can we go here? Can we go here real quick? Uh, somebody said go to A flat. Let me see what A flat sound like. <laughs> yeah. And the Bible says, how long do we sit and do nothing? How long? Mm -mm. So, I just, my, my question is this, y'all. With the sanctity of the church, after, after Bishop Blake 
officially steps down. You said out of key. I think I'm gonna have to go back to my D flat. Okay. Um, with Bishop Blake stepping down. With Bishop Blake stepping down, we come a long ways, right? We come a long ways from the day of G.E. Patterson. Come on, somebody. He said, get off here and read my Bible. That's what he said, tweet. Okay, so we sit back, and this ain't you, cousin, so we sit back and just let people do what they want to do and we don't question them. That, that's what you're, Okay, let me go back to what I was saying initially because that was about to take me somewhere else. Because if Donald Brown, Donald said, I need to go somewhere and go pray. <sighs> Listen, we've come a long ways from the days of G.E. Patterson, right? A mighty long ways. But even, but even... In the day of G.E. Patterson, there was stuff going on when G.E. Patterson was in office. Now, what's funny is, Tweet, I don't know if y'all know, but what's funny is because Earl Carter and I, Earl Carter and I, you said, no, he didn't. Okay. All right. He didn't. Okay. Sorry, Donald. Sorry about that. My apologies. My cousin about to send me on a tangent. Um, the, the situation that y'all don't realize is after I have had after I've had conversations with my former pastor, uh, Bishop Earl Carter, who was elder pastor Earl Carter in the church. Um, no, Trent, that's my cousin. That's my cousin. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, Earl Carter was used multiple times in this church. In this church to do foolishness. He was used multiple times to do a bunch of fan danglement and to discredit a lot of people in the church. Earl Carter, let me tell y'all something. First of all, before there was a Bishop Patrick Wooten, there was an Earl Carter. Earl Carter, let me give y'all a little history about Earl Carter. Earl Carter has been preaching faggots and sissies and liver-lifted men and big-lipped men that want to be women and, and, and you need to be a real man. Y'all think, y'all think Mother Kelly Y'all think Mother Kelly is something. Baby Earl Carter? Now, they said S.C. Mitchell was something, too. But baby Earl Carter? <laughs> Earl Carter was, ooh, ooh. See, we didn't have social media like this back then. Earl Carter? Baby, Earl Carter was no joke. Like, dead serious. Like, if he was up on a public platform, if he was, a, I'm telling you, it would be folks, the FBC, the BBC, Facebook, social media, YouTube. Everybody would be shutting Earl Carter down. CNN would be talking about Earl Carter. Listen, for real. But Earl Carter, real talk though. Earl Carter could preach his face off. Y'all, y'all don't understand. Like, if y'all ever had to go to a church service with Earl Carter, I'm talking about that man would really give you a show. I need you to take your leg. Oh yeah, now. Go. Back on your bed. Earl Carter, listen to me, y'all. I ain't popped my dog, just popped the bed like this. Listen, there are videos of S.C. Mitchell preaching like that. You're absolutely right. But Earl Carter was really very much so an entertainment preacher. That man, that man could preach his, I don't know about, I don't know, see, some of y'all young children don't know nothing about this. See, I'm an 80s baby. I grew up with all of this. Now, Donald, Donald Knight asked a question. He said, do I feel like everybody loved Bishop G.E. Patterson? Absolutely not. Everybody did not love G.E. Patterson. However, the church and the world loved G.E. Patterson. Why? Because G.E. Patterson has a, had a love for the people. Now, y'all can fight me on that. Do, 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 do. Fight me on that. G.E. Patterson had a love for the people, and he was the people's peoples. Hear me? G.E. Patterson was the people's bishop. 
not only the church bishop, but he was the people's bishop. That's real, y'all. That's where he was the people's bishop. That's what y'all need to understand. And see, a lot of folks, a lot of people, uh, Auntie Tab, fail to realize that we've come so far from preaching the word of God and ministering to the people. Now we ministering. Now we ministering to the bishops because we want we want we jocking like bro did not preach today we rubbing elbows and carrying out like what no no who is that I just saw somebody come on whoa because it's some more of my Memphis folks are coming on here hold on who did I just saw ah uh, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute. Day, Darius, Darius, that, that my, my Memphis, my Memphis folks is coming on here. My Memphis folks is coming on here. Come on, come on, talk back to me. Y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't make me hit these keys on y'all real quick. So y'all, here's the thing, y'all. Um, we've come so far. We've come so far from those days, right? We've come so far from those days that it's, it's really like, once Bishop G.E. Patterson died and then they disrespected his wife, Auntie Louise. Y'all know that was a mess. Y'all don't, don't play with me. Y'all know how they disrespected Auntie Louise was a whole mess. Okay? Baby, how they try to disrespect that man and his wife and put his stuff out there on the curb. The bishops did that. Hey, Auntie Carolyn, the bishops did that. Period. And then what you know what's so graceful about Auntie Lou is she still stood, right? She still stood and was a classy woman. She was still a classy woman about it. These are the fights in the church because people want prestige and position by any means necessary. Is this is what is this? What the church has resulted to? Huh? Is this what the church has resort has resorted to? Y'all, this is foolish. Hey, Miko, what's up, big sis? Y'all, this is foolish. And, and then on top of that, y'all, because I know Auntie Lou. I, I know Auntie, okay? That is a sweet woman. Now, you catch her on the wrong day, off the scene, she will get you. She will get you told. See, because Louise and Francis Kelly, they run neck and neck. But hot, listen. See, <laughs> see, some of y'all, some of y'all don't know. See, some of y'all ain't really church, church. See, but it's the women that have been holding all this stuff together for real. It's the women that's been holding all this stuff together for so long. And yet and still, the women get disrespected while the men are put on these pedestals. It's been the women that's been the glue to everything. Y'all, for real. But yet and still, the women get disrespected. You know what I saw was, you know what I thought was so disrespectful in our church? You know what I thought was so disrespectful? How my auntie, Patricia Riley Lewis, died. And the national church didn't even recognize her. I thought that was real disrespectful. I somebody put some little janky flyer out uh, with, with, with the church information. I said, is this what she was worth? Oh, I forgot. She ain't mother, mother, mother sheared. Willie Mae sheared. Oh. But she didn't preach for all y'all and, and tore the house down. Anybody know what I'm talking See, See, what, what y'all got to understand is, baby, y'all going to stop disrespecting the glue. Can I, can I talk right there? Y'all, hey, uh, Apostle Nix, y'all going to stop disrespecting the glue. Because it's the glue that's holding everything together. And if the glue ain't there to hold everything together, how, how you going to stand? How you going to stand? And then on top of that, I saw Dorinda's. I saw Dorinda's post in the flyer. And I put in the comments, I was like, really, Dorinda? Really? You going to post this? But that was your sister? Come on now. 
Y'all, but this, this, I'm telling y'all, the church is another form of my fair lady. The church is another form of my fair lady. Anybody know Rayshawn? Anybody know and ever seen the movie My Fair Lady? Boys, y'all need to go potty? Prince, go potty? Hold on, y'all. Anybody ever seen the movie My Fair Lady? Y'all tell me now. Come on, tell me. If y'all ever seen the movie My Fair Lady, I just need to know. When I come back to the camera, I need to see if anybody has ever seen the movie My Fair Lady. Come on, boys, y'all go outside. Go. I just need to know. I need to know. Anybody ever seen the movie My Fair Lady? Anybody ever seen the movie My Fair Lady? Ah, oh, let's see. Hey, what's up, Ashley? So. Hold on, who needed some help? Hold on. I did. <laughs> so here's the thing. Hey y'all, what's up, loves? The church is a is another form of my fair lady. We take people, the men love to take women that don't nobody know. And take them around, their little friends are carrying on, and they give them a little prestige and things like that. And then, you know, they can sing a little bit, so they get it. Open door here, open door there. Boom, 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 boom. It's to make the men look good. And then men are the same way. You take a man around this particular person, a man around that particular person. It gives them notoriety. Oh, I know, I know Bishop this. I know so-and-so this and supervised. Da -da -da -da. The church is his own culture, right? The church is its own culture. That's what people fail to realize. The church world is its own subculture. In order for you to, and this, and this is facts. This is facts, y'all. In order to move up in the world, especially money-wise, you have to know the right people. You got to know the right people. You got to act a certain way. And then ultimately, you have to play the game. I promise y'all right now. I promise y'all right now. Right now. I promise y'all right now. Baby, let me sit out here. Because <coughs> there's a lot of these little, little twisted booty boys that's out here getting, just getting married. Because they want a position because they feel like Bishop Shear going to be the next president, the next presiding bishop. So they want to get in good with Bishop Shear. And so they out here getting married so they can be acceptable in the subculture. They want to be accepted in the subculture. I'm just saying, I'm just saying they want to be accepted so they live it. Because they want to be accepted and they want to be able to move amongst the people and they want that chatter that's been talked about them to calm down. But you can't calm down when you're still doing the same thing you was doing prior to you getting that woman. Mm, knees, all knees, knees, knees. So, um, where was we at, y'all? Where was we at? Where was we at? Because I got I to gotta finish some work. What time is it? Um... Five o'clock. Okay, I got a couple hours. So, um, we have a problem. We have a huge problem. And I don't know if the saints or the bishops or anything really want to fix it. Because I promise you, what, what's going on? Let me, let me say this. And I, I think we probably can close service. We can close service with a good song. And that's this. The reason why you see big organization, big organizations like this dwindling, you see big organizations like this dwindling is because they have 
halted themselves up in pride so long. And then you get little people like Matthew Stevenson that come around. Y'all, I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Didn't nobody know who Matthew Stevenson really was until Matthew Stevenson came to aim. Y'all, come on now. Come on, talk back to me. Nobody knew who Matthew Stevenson was until he came to aim. And after he came to aim, I think that was in Charlotte, and they made a fool out of him, and he talked about them so bad. The church talked about them, about him so bad. And Matthew Stevenson got up in the pulpit with his little fitted suit on and read the church for filth. Did nobody know who he was until then? And then after then, come on now, I'm talking facts. After he read the church for filth right in their own house, you saw everybody in the church, including the young people, leaving coaching churches and trying to find Matthew Stevenson. Now, several years later, Matthew Stevenson is, is making money, big bucks, of retarded people and opening churches up in different cities and different states because people... These young people are not like those people. These young people are renegades that want to find the presence of the Lord. These young people, this generation of people are renegades that go and kick against the rules and they want God some kind of way, some kind of way, form or fashion. They want God. Where I go wrong at? Where I go wrong at? So because, because you made a mockery, y'all share this video, y'all share the video, share the video, share the video. Because you've made a mockery, huh? See, what, what, what y'all did was, let me, let me tell you, let me tell y'all, and I'm not trying to call this man uh, the devil. I'm not trying to call this man the devil, but the Bible says certain men crept in. This over there in Jude. Certain men crept in unaware to subvert the faith. Certain men crept in unaware to subvert the faith. Now you go there with, with, with Matthew Stevenson, them. That's fine, that's cool, but they do whatever they want to do. Uh, hello, somebody. They do whatever they want to do. Honey, they wear tight clothes, baby, boobies be out, dingling be sitting on one side, they bricks the can on. You be sitting in the church trying to get Jesus and you're lusting. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on, church. Come on. Don't act like you ain't got no eyes because you see it. And they teach, you know, all they teach the word and all of this other stuff going on. They teach bro. I mean, they teach without teaching. They teach them bromance, slapping each other on the booties and kettle, grabbing each other, tingling legs and kettle, rubbing on each other and hooking and kettle, period. All of this stuff going on. And I'm just like, so we got a whole problem with homosexuals, but we out here doing the most, right? Okay. Hey, we doing the most. But this is what happens when you make fun of people on a pub, on a public platform. Y'all, let me let my dogs in my house. <laughs> this is what happens when you make fun of people on a public platform. You make fun of them and you give them the attention that they deserve. And now everybody wants to go where they are. Move, King. Move. Everybody wants to go where they are. Now, y'all keep on and try to disturb me. I'm put you on y'all kennel now. Don't play with me. Papi is trying to work. Okay? This is what goes on. You make fun of people on a public platform, and now you send everybody who enjoyed what they were saying, you send everybody to them. Y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Was that Sunday night? No, I think that was th Tuesday or Thursday. That Bishop Patrick Wooten got up in the pulpit and tried to clown William McCray. Let me tell y'all what happened. Tell y'all what happened. So you got on your platform and you tried to clown William McCray. What did all the saints do? 
Come on, y'all, talk back to me. Wait, what are you doing? I don't want, no, I'm not holding you. Stop. You ain't cute right now. Sit down somewhere. Just. Thank you, Bruce. Wait, what? What Bernard Gordon say? Hold on. Let me see. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about, but anyways. <clears throat> so, after service, after service, when service was over with and Bishop Wooten got through preaching, everybody was anticipating and waiting Right? Everybody was anticipating to see what William McCray was going to say. Am I lying? Maurice, come on now. I was, I was there that year. Matter of fact, I was there that year. Everybody was anticipating William to go smooth off on Bishop Patrick Wood. Period. Absolutely. And he did. He had what, like about two, three hundred people on live that, that day? Anticipating what he was going to say. You done made a whole message about William McCray. How was that edifying the body of Christ? How is that? How? Again, y'all, we do some of the craziest things in the church. What are you doing? We do some of the craziest things in the church. And we put God's label on it like it's he approves it. We, this is not okay. We have moved from edify, and I got to get back to what I was talking about. My race, we have moved from edifying the body of Christ. We have moved from edifying the Lord's people, supposedly the Lord's people, to we're just doing things for the sake of attention. Right? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm going to put you in your bed here. You and you, prince and king. Don't get up here on me. We do things for the sake of attention. That very same year, Maurice, Mother Kelly went smooth off. Miss Janice, that very same year, you had Mother Kelly going off. You had uh, 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 Patrick Wooten going off. It was a mess. And I'm sitting back the whole while like, how is this, how is this edifying anybody? How is this edifying anybody? So I'm going to ask y'all this right here. While Sister Karen Shear is out here posting about folks need to elect her husband. Let me, let me tell y'all something. And that's this. When we get through, stop. When we get through, Kimberell. Oh, was that Kimberell that year? Antonio, was that Kimberell? Oh, that was a whole lot. Nobody is being edified. And everybody's saying amen. Nobody is being edified, but everybody is saying amen, and they're shouting, and they're dancing. Tremaine, come get him. <laughs> get both of them, as a matter of fact. They'll be packed up and ready to go. Nothing is, nobody's being edified. Nobody's being delivered. Nobody's being set free. But we sure are doing a lot of uh, dancing and shouting. We're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of that, right? We're doing a lot of that. And we're coming to church and we're leaving the very same way. This is the problem. So let me say this. Whoever takes the seat, I pray, because I'm gonna show up. I pray. Kenneth, I believe you. Hey, Nay. I pray that whoever uh, 
I pray that whoever takes the general board, whoever takes the PB seat, I pray. Hey, Stefan, what's up, cousin? I pray that the spirit of God comes back in the church. I pray it does. I really, I mean, I really truly mean that. I pray it does because we've lost the spirit. Honey, we, listen here. The church, I, honey, let me tell you something. Honey, the church is good at this. <laughs> Some of y'all, y'all feet moving right now. Y'all feet is moving right now. How do y'all? We got to take That's on 155. Y'all feet is moving right now. I'm sorry, New Yorkers. Some of y'all New Yorkers are used to 168. This y'all New Yorkers. This y'all Kojic, New York. This for y'all Kojic, New York people. <laughs> this for y'all. All right. Let me get back to... Uh, Let me get back to my. So, that was at 158, Tremaine. <laughs> I told y'all, New York people, they love 160, 168. They love it. <laughs> but anyways, I'm, I'm just being honest with you all. Listen, um, and I'm, I'm saying this publicly. I'm saying this publicly because this is facts. This is true. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it my reason. I have an, other prior situations that are, and I hate to make it sound like this, but like they're dire situations and I got to be here to tend to them. So anyway, I, I wish I could y'all record it and send it to me. Um, but if this church that is over a hundred years old, 1897 to 2021, over about 115, 20 years old by now, this church that is over a hundred and some odd years old will be no more. Let, let, let me say that one more time. If you can't make things right soon, I'm going to say it one more time. If you cannot make things right soon, not only will the people leave in droves, but they will never return again. And the people that you've made fun of, I'm not, I'm, listen here, I'm not prophesying, I'm stating facts. The people that you've made fun of, these off-brand organizations, I'm going to talk to y'all again, you better hear me, these off-brand organizations who ain't been around but, but a minute. These people are going to take your people and you're going to be a has-been. Oh, ain't nobody going to talk to me now? Ain't nobody going to talk to me now? Y'all ain't got quiet. You got the hush mouth. You got the hush mouth. You got the hush mouth. Oh, okay. You keep treating people like they're yesterday's news. You keep treating people like they're trash. These people are going to move around. These people are going to move around. And they're going to go to these off-brand organizations. Yes, I said it. 
They're going to go to these off-brand organizations and they're going to start up and they're going to do their thing over there. Uh, Mari said, this church is in the hands of God. We have four men who are running for the seat to lead to sign the sign of God. Hand okay. I I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just... I'm just saying, y'all talk about church in the hand of God. Listen, I'm talking about these these organizations have started. Can I can I can I can I can I say this real quick? These organizations have started because these people are disgruntled. Can I? I'm gonna say that one more time. These organizations have started because these because they left somebody's church disgruntled. So they just started up some off-brand organization because they're disgruntled and they're mad at their previous leader and then they want to go start their own stuff up because they feel like, I'm tired, y'all wrong, I'm going to be right, I'm going to do better than you. It's, it's a way to prove something. Oh, I thought I had some in my nose, y'all. Period. 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 At the end of the day, church, we are pushing people away fast. I'm going to say it one more time. Church, we are pushing people away fast. Y'all can share the video. It's okay. Share the video. It's 83 y'all niggas on. It was about 113, 14, 20 y'all on. Share the video. We're pushing the people away in droves because we do not do right by them. We do not do right by them. And we definitely don't do right by the women who sit back and pray fast and support you. Huh? You definitely don't support the women that 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 have stood by praying, fasting, and 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 interceding, and they're the reason why the church is financially stable. Oh, y'all don't. Oh, I just said. Oh, I just said some right there. The women are the reason why the church is financially stable. The women. It's amazing that you can congratulate Kamala, but you can't even congratulate the women that's at your church that's doing exponential things in the church. It's amazing. Come on here now. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna walk heavy today. It's amazing. It's amazing that y'all men are excited for Kamala because she's a black dark colored woman that's in the White House. Just like Barack was in the White House. But you got strong women. You got strong women right in your midst and you don't even uplift them because you're chauvinistic. It's a man's church. Uh, that's what y'all saying. It's a man's church, but it will be nothing without a woman. It's a man's church, but it would be nothing without a woman. Oh, Mario, you just you just a mama's boy. You just you you big on supporting the women. Why? Because the women are the birthers of us. So if you can't support the birthers of you, that's a problem. Because when the love and the support is, is, is constantly flowing, everybody's blessed. If the women in the church are blessed like the men are blessed in the church, baby, you will see a move of God like never before. That's a problem. That's a problem. If the women of God, 
if the women is that's in the church, if the women that are in the church cannot excel and prosper and be on the same platform as the men, if they are not treated with respect, this church will go. Oh, I just, ooh, ooh, y'all is just so mean. Y'all see how fast these Negroes jumped off here? I know they're going to hate me. I'm the devil. I'm leading the folks astray. Y'all see that? Can I get all the women to please share this live? Can I get all the lovely ladies to share this live? Because Elder Jives do love you. I really do. Elder King do love you. Ladies, please share this live. Hey, ladies. Ooh, I want to be your man. Want to be your man. Ladies, can I get y'all to share this live, please? Share this live and 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 please comment, okay? Miss Perlene, hey baby, y'all share this live. Cause the men, baby, I just baby, I'm talking about I got about what 20 men and just left real quick. Baby, when I start talking about uplifting the women, Rashawn, you tell uh you tell your uh your grandma um uh Mother Lewis, Bob Bob McCool Lewis that 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 Elder King is on here talking. Elder King Jive is on here talking, okay? Listen, Auntie, uh, at Natalie, let me tell y'all something. If you cannot share and be equal, you will miss the whole boat, okay? If you are a bigotry man, and you feel like a woman is here and you are here, this is a problem. Let me tell you why it's a problem. Let me tell you why, men, it's a problem. Because me personally, I feel a woman can lead too. But the, the attitudes and everything has to be balanced. Because women are emotional. So are men. Period. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <sighs> Hold on, hold on. How is it that we can sit here and we act like women have no place in the church? We act like women are nothing but they are here to serve. I'm going to break this thing down for you. Ladies, tell your other girlfriends to come on the live. Ladies, go tell your other girlfriends to bring their Ruta Batutas over here on, and let's let's have this conversation. Because I'm going to bless y'all real quick. Why? And I know I got some men on here who understand exactly what I'm saying. L ladies, go get your girlfriends and tell them I said, come on here. While the men are acting such a fool, let me bless y'all today real quick. Let me bless y'all real quick today. While the men are acting a fool, the Bible says that God created them. And then God said, let us create man in our image. And then it goes on to say that man should not be alone. So he pulled one man out of man. So man could never say, oh, he made you different from me. No, sir. No, sir. God pulled woman from you. There is no difference. She's made from you. She's made just like you. Hello? You don't get to be separate when God made you equal. I'm just, I'm just saying. Am I preaching today? Am, am, I talk, am I talking right? Am I talking right? Come on here now. Am I talking right? Am I talking right? See, you want to get upset because, okay, I feel, I feel a tune in my voice. Ah, nah. See, you want to get upset. You want to get upset. You want to get upset because you feel like a woman can out-preach you. You want to get upset because you feel a woman can out-preach you. But you shouldn't get upset because a woman is doing better than you because if she is a part of you. Come on here now. If she is a part of you, 
Hello, somebody. If that woman is a part of you, you ought to applaud her. You ought to appreciate her. Come on here now. Come on here now. Because that woman is a part of you. Mary, your sister, your best friend, that's my friend right there. You better preach. You better go ahead and go forth. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You can't get upset at a woman if she's doing better than you because one thing about it, if that's your sister, your friend, your girlfriend, your best friend, your good Judy, she is a part of you. So you applaud and uplift what is a part of you? I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm just saying. When you can't carry the load, she picks up the weight and goes on. And when you build up strength, you go back and pick up the load and keep on going forward. You don't leave her out here by yourself. Let me break it down for you one more time. Oh, I, I guess the men are leaving again. I guess the men are leaving. Ladies, can I can I get about 20 of y'all good girlfriends to come on over here and say, what's up? Huh? Let me help y'all one more time. Let me help you one more time, uh, my sister Tabitha. Let me help you one more time. If you as a man, if you as a man feel that women should be subservient to you. If you as a man feel that women should be subservient to you, let me help you today. The Bible says, the Bible, since y'all want, see, 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 it, it, uh, shorty, they said I'm, I'm leading the people astray. Niece, they said I'm, I'm leading the people astray. If you as a man feel that women are subservient to you, go back to the beginning of the book. I'm going to say it for you one more time. Go back to the beginning of the book when God created woman. Huh? Go back to the beginning of the book when God created man. He created them. That's what the Bible says. He said, let us create them. Let us create them. And then he said it again. Let us create man. And he did it all over again. He pulled woman from man. He didn't, he didn't go get some dirt and make woman by herself. He pulled her from him. So that man could never say, oh, he made you different from me. Nope. He made woman from you. Oh, I got another, I got another one for you. Mm. I got another one for you. Ooh, I got another one for you. If you feel that there was a problem with a woman moving and operating in the world or the church, the Bible says that in God there is either male or female. Y'all don't hear me. I'm just trying. I'm trying to tell you that while you're worried about gender, God said, don't worry. Because enemy is neither male nor female. I don't know about you today. But God... Is not worried about your sex. Oh Lord. He's not worried. If you are male or female. But he said come unto me. All ye that labor. And I will. Give you rest. Take me out of that key. God. Is not worried about. What do you do in the bedroom? But he said, Peter. Oh, Peter. He said, feed my sheep. Take out a key. He said, Peter, feed.
feed my sheep. I'm not worried about whether you're male or female, but feed my sheep. Listen. <laughs> I love y'all. Who is this? I love y'all. I got to get out of here. I love y'all. I got to get out of here. Listen, this is entertaining. I love y'all. Tabitha said, I'm running. Listen, running, running, running. I can't tear it. Running, running, running. I can't tear it. Listen, I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I am not going to tear it. I'm running up the King's Highway. Listen, uh, this has been good. I hope y'all got something. I hope y'all got something out of this. I really do appreciate you all. Thank y'all so much. Tomorrow night, I'm going to say y'all tomorrow night, Auntie Natalie, uh, I'll be on with Bishop Jordan, uh, uh, David Jordan. Dave, let me specify that. I'll be on with Bishop David Jordan on the Heat Show, okay? And uh, we're going to be talking about the general elections and all this other stuff. We're going to be spilling a little tea. You know, y'all, I'm going to have to behave. You know what I'm saying? I love you, too. I love you, too. Mm, I love you, too. Um, listen here. Don't please, you know, baby, I'm all man. And I appreciate who God has made me to be. And I appreciate being raised like I was raised. I appreciate the women that raised me. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be the way that I am today if it wasn't for a woman. I appreciate my father, Tony Clay. I appreciate my father, but I also appreciate my mother, Jeanette Jives, and my auntie, and my grandmama, and my other aunts, and everybody, because they, they carried something else. My dad was a minister in the Church of God in Christ. My mother was a is, was a evangelist, missionary, all this other stuff. My grandma was about to be a supervisor, but she cared more about our children than a, than a title, period, okay? I love y'all. I love you. And anything you can do about it. So until next time, peace out, y'all. Talk to you later.